is Beyond the Badge, a program we do at KSL to honor peace officers from all over the state of Utah. A different officer every week, and here is a portion of the interview about this week's officer. To tell me about which trooper you have nominated for uh, this week's Beyond the Badge. Uh, trooper Craig Youngberg, uh, outstanding young man and a great public servant to the many people here in Utah. Tell me about uh, why you nominated this trooper. Yeah, well, he went above and beyond the call of duty on March 3rd when a, a family was in a car crash and a rock slide had occurred, heavy rain. Um, the family was somewhat um, less blessed than we are as far as finances go, so they didn't have any finances to pay for the tow truck to get their car um, off the side of the road. Uh, Trooper Youngberg worked with the tow company to actually offer to pay for the tow services for this family. Um, the tow company said, we won't have any of it. We'll make sure we do this for free. But then the other dilemma came up. Um, the family had a car which was not going to be able to be operated, and therefore they had to stay overnight. And they thought, well, maybe we'll just sleep in a car. And Tro Trooper Youngberg said, no way, no. Nope. Um, he took him to a hotel room, got him checked in the hotel room, and paid for that out of his own money, out of his own pocket. And remember, these troopers are making um, near poverty level wages, and they have families at home they have to take care of. He took it upon himself to not only make sure that this family was taken care of, but to use his own resources and money to make sure that this family was going to be comfortable that night. And to me, that is absolutely going beyond um, above the call of duty. It shows true compassion and service, and it's everything that we stand for in the Highway Patrol, and what a great, great trooper we have in Trooper Young. Mm. Is what he did a rare thing? No, you know, it, it happens quite often in the Highway Patrol and around the, around the nation. You just don't hear about him. You know, we have troopers that are doing things that go above and beyond, but what Trooper Youngberg did this day was um, was absolutely something that uh, he feels strongly about. He, obviously, he's a man of true character and integrity, and he's the type of trooper that we want on our roadways mm -hmm. to make sure that the public is safe. And, and uh, although it happens often, um, this one was extra special, like I said, because he's making near poverty level in wages, mm -hmm. and he's taking money out of his own pocket to pay for a family that's in need. Because he met this family, and they were in an accident situation, so they were frightened already. And then to have the double fear of having to sleep in a car after that, he wouldn't let that happen. You're absolutely right. So not only is their car not, I mean, they have to get the car off the roadway because of the slide, and they had no finances to take care of that. Imagine the burden and the stress knowing you can't pay for your own vehicle to be removed from the scene. And then on top of that, where are we going to sleep tonight? In our own car? Um, so yeah, it was a double burden for them, and he said, you know what, um, if not me, then who? If I'm not going to take care of it, who's going to? And so he stepped up and, and made sure that family was comfortable, which is uh, it's just it's just an honor to wear the same uniform that he does. What a great man. You know, that statement, if not me, then who, seems like something that troopers and officers in general are often, are often doing. If not me, then who, and you step up. That's right. You know, you see somebody on the side of the road with a flat tire, or you have somebody in a, in a bad crash and needs comfort, or you have a DUI driver that's all over the road. If not you, then who's going to do it? Who is going to intervene in those situations? And it's kind of a theme in the Hive Patrol, if not you, then who? And um, that's why we take our, our position so serious. I want to meet this trooper now. <laughs> trooper, tell me about what happened that day. Um, like the Colonel mentioned, we'd received a call about an accident involving a road slide, and there were several vehicles involved. I think four to five vehicles had been disabled by the rocks. And when I arrived on scene, um, all the other vehicles had already uh, either repaired their vehicles or they had determined how they were going to move their vehicles off the roadway. But this young couple uh, from out of state, obviously traveling somewhere else, if I recall correctly, they might have been headed to a funeral. Mm -hmm. they, um, they were talking to each other and uh, trying to figure out how they were going to pay to get their vehicle off the side of the road. When the tow arrived, um, they were trying to negotiate just to get off the next off-ramp, which um, I don't know if you're familiar with ID4 near Croydon, but there's no uh, services. It was late at night. There's no hotels, no gas stations, anything. And uh, it was early in March, late. It was raining, like the colonel had mentioned. It was very cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, as they were discussing how they were going to try and pay for the tow, um, all of us there were just kind of moved um, by, by their situation. Um, there was a UDOT supervisor on scene that had assisted with clearing the roadway. And he and I both approached the tow truck driver and offered to help with the tow, at which point the tow truck driver said, you know, I'll take care of it. And so really grateful to him for helping him out. And then uh, 
we moved them into the Ogden area down to South Weaver where there's a Motel 6 and I while I was on my way following the tow truck driver I called my wife uh, to discuss it with her because I uh, just wanted to make sure that she didn't see a charge on the car and wonder what was going on <laughs> and uh, and um, you know she was hesitant at first uh, I think probably my job influences her a little bit and, and she was concerned that they maybe would it uh, accrue some charges that other than just the hotel fee she was worried about that um, and like like the colonel mentioned I mean we're not rich being troopers but um, I just told her that you know sometimes you need to trust people and they were a young couple I'd, I've been newly married and low on funds just like them and so she agreed and and uh, I just slipped them the uh, room key as they were talking to the tow. So. And how did they react? Uh, so the the husband didn't speak English, <laughs> so it was kind of delayed. But the wife was very grateful. They were they were very nice people and, and very grateful. You know what the colonel said: if not you, who? Do you find yourself regularly in situations where you just need to do the extra thing to take care of people? I, I think so. Um, a lot of times we just get grouped in as police officers or troopers, but we're all uh, men and women and, and um, sons and daughters, husbands, fathers, wives. And so we, I think we all, um, there's that human aspect that, that people I don't think see as often on the side of the road. So. What made you become a trooper? Uh, I think like most people, uh, throughout my life I've experienced things, um, had positive interactions with law enforcement, um, had family members that were in need where law enforcement responded. And um, I, I've just always looked up to those those people that intervened in those times in my life when, when we needed help and just wanted to do that mm. for other people. How does your wife feel when you, when you leave the, the house every day? Does she feel, is she okay you leave the house every day? Is she, I imagine she's proud of what you do. Yeah, she she said that she's proud. I, I know she's worried. Um, she does a good job of hiding it. I've been a law enforcement officer for about seven years and so she's kind of a seasoned law enforcement wife. But uh, those times when law enforcement have, officers have been shot or injured while on duty, I think that's when you see her true feelings and she's obviously concerned. Yeah. Would you please tell her on behalf of all of us that we are grateful for the sacrifice that she makes and we are grateful for you, Trooper? I will, thank you. Thank you for this great, great thing you did and all the great things you do every day. And thank you, Colonel, for the great work you do beyond the badge on KSL News Radio.